What's up, guys? We back for another episode of <laughs> This Dope Cookie Show. Yes, I got merch. Yep, sure do. <laughs> so look, I'm working on something to get to you guys so you can get your This Dope Cooking Show shirt. Check me out. <laughs> so look, guys, today we're going to have some collard greens, just like my mom used to make. We're going to have some smoked mac and cheese. And some made from scratch chicken fingers. Remember last week we talked about how when I worked at the NBC Suites, we used to fry chicken on Sundays. That's what we're doing today. So sit back, tune in, tell a friend. This dope cooking show, we're about to get started. And it's about to go down. Um, the Daniel Fast is over. So shout out to those of you that made it through the whole thing. Um, again, by now you probably didn't ate that 32 ounce steak, but if you haven't, get, start back with the meat slowly, fish, ground turkey, ground beef. Also, thank you for those that, um, got in the comments on my YouTube that had questions. I appreciate you guys. If you got a question, send it to me. I'm going to respond because I mean, I'm trying to grow my channel and like, I like talking to people because I mean, we just chilling. So uh, no beef or nothing, nothing like that. We just chilling. We just, I'm cooking. You looking? It's all good. So thank you for those comments. I responded. If I missed your comment, I'll get back to it. I promise you. Um, let's get into it, guys. <laughs> Another episode of what? <laughs> let's go. What's up, guys? Welcome to this dope cookie show. Hey, we having some greens, man. We doing some greens, just like my mom used to do it. So look, uh, I don't know where and how you do your greens, but uh, I know for me, I don't like no stems, I don't like no sticks, I don't like none of that in there. So I, I take my greens and I just put them right down that vein, just like so, cause no stems, no sticks. We just want these leaves. All we want is these leaves, guys. So what's up? Welcome to another episode of this dope cooking show. On to the menu today. We have greens, smoked mac and cheese, chicken strips. I know you might be saying chicken strips. Nah, man. You know this is a you know Sunday. The Chiefs on their way back to the Super Bowl, and uh, you know. We got to eat. So this is what we doing because my kids like mac and cheese. I, I just wanted some greens. Honestly, I really, really, really wanted some greens. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to do mashed potatoes. I wanted to do the smoked mac and cheese recipe. Now I did. I had a catering the other day and I did a smoked. Uh, I did a Cajun mac and cheese and it was fire. So I was like, shoot, let's just do some smoke because my kid is not with the um, spicy. They not really, you know, they not they grand. Now, their granddaddy will eat a jalapeno like an apple. But these little dudes, they're not doing it. So I just thought I'd fancy it up for them a little bit. So for me, um, my greens, collard greens, of course, but I also add a little um, mustard greens in there. Just give it a little different flavor. Plus, my mama told me, and I mean, mama's always right, right? <laughs> Who's going to question mama? So she said, add some mustard greens in there. And sure, I will do that. No problem. So we got some mustard greens. We got we got a little bushel. We got a little bushel of mustard greens, probably. And then uh, collard greens is going to be the rest of it. So I'm just going to do a little pot because... I'm probably be the only one to eat them. And if you are on here and you know somebody that knows how to make chow chow, that has a chow chow recipe, send them to me. Send them to me. I'm telling you, ain't nothing like having some fresh greens with some chow chow on the top. So look, um, tell them, get in the comments. And tell them, hey, holla at Chef Jeff. 
because he's got he wants some chow chow and uh if i got to dry to get some if you gotta ship it to me i want some okay just let me know where to go so just a quick little we getting started here so look i don't know what you season your greens with but i use smoked turkey necks and wings and I'm going to tell you all the cheat code, all right? Now, my mama told me to put them, you know, put them in a pot with your seasonings and let them boil. Well, here's what I do. I put all of my seasonings in the pot, but I put it in the pressure cooker. Yeah, man. Put it in the pressure cooker and let it cook. <laughs> Saves on time. And it makes it tender. Make that, make that, with that turkey. Tend to quick, so uh, pressure cooker. Just let it roll until you're ready for it. Actually, that's what I'm doing. I let it go until I'm ready for it. So we're just gonna get these greens a little rough chop. We're gonna get them in our bowl, and then we're gonna get them over to the sink. We're gonna wash them out because you know these greens. Never trust greens when you get them from the store. They water them down all day long, and they spray all that water on them. That's cool, but don't trust them. I'm just telling you. Do not trust them because there's mud in them, it's dirt, it's pesticides, residue, etc. See that little stem try to get in there? It's pesticides, it's residue, stuff like that. So always, all I don't care where you get them from, who always wash your greens every single time without fail. Wash them greens because the last thing you want is to get a good big bite of these well seasoned tender greens and they got some soot in them and it tastes like you just bit into a pocket of gravel oh it's the worst i'm telling you oh man i have been to some places where they greens they first of all i've been to places where they just cut this up and they leave all this in there no bueno nah 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 peel that off that stem man we don't want no stems no sticks no stems, no sticks in the greens, man. Peel all them leaves off. Peel all them leaves off. Yeah. So wash your greens. It is important. It is imperative. It is a must do to wash your greens. Rinse them a couple of times. And ain't no what? Put a little soap in the water. I put a little soap in my water. It's a little drip. Just a little drop of soap in there. Well, um, really excited about this menu this week because, I mean, First of all, it's chicken. Second of all, it's greens. And then you throw in some good, good mac. I'm going to show you how I do my mac and cheese. So don't tell nobody unless you tell them to come to this dope cooking show and watch the show. If you tell a friend to tune in, they can see how I do it. Don't be just telling nobody my secrets. It's between me and you. All right? So you be the hit at your next party, at your next gathering. You want to show out for your man. You want to show out for your boot thing. You want to do a smoked mac and cheese? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. It's how we're going to show you how to do it, right? Show you how we're going to do it. So sit back, relax, get ready. I'm going to finish peeling these, finish cutting and peeling and trimming these greens. Get them ready to get rinsed off. And we'll come back. We'll get started on another part of the menu. Hey, so we're getting ready to wash our greens, guys. Don't forget to wash them. Wash, rinse, and repeat. I thought it was soap in mine. I ain't ashamed. Let y'all know I want them clean. Hear me? We're going to get that little, little, little bit in there. We're going to wash them good. Yeah. Get them in there. Rinse them a few times. I'm going to rinse them a few times. So I'm going to let these soak. And then I'm going to rinse them again. And we're going to come back and get them in the... Get them in our pot, get them ready to go with everything we got in our pressure cooker. Get ready, stay tuned. All right, so look at that water. That's after the first rinse. That's why it's important to rinse and wash your greens. It's important. Don't skip this step. All right, so we're getting ready with our second rinse, guys. Washing these greens, getting them clean so we can get them started. Don't wash them greens. Ain't nothing wrong with washing them. Wash them up.
you only feel better about your end product at the end, I promise you. So like those pre-washed greens, those pre-cut greens, if you should choose to use those, still wash them. As you see, I cut my own greens. I peel my own greens off the stem. I want nobody to do it for me. I do my own. Thank you. All right, guys. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that wash right there. Look at that wash. Look at the water, though. Look how clear, clear the water is after that washing. See? That's why you want to wash your stuff. Because all of that other stuff from that first wash would have been in your green. You got to wash them out. Look at that. Look at that water. It's clear. Yeah, you got to wash your greens, guys. Wash them. All right, we're going to get them in the pot. All right, guys, we got our super good juice boiling. So, look, this is nothing but um, chicken broth, um, turkey neck, turkey wing, garlic. I took some cloves of garlic and put it, cloves of garlic and put it in there, and some onions. Um, salt and pepper for right now, right? And I put that in the pressure cooker and let that cook down. So, like, this is some of what's left over. I let that cook down until that, that, that turkey, that smoked turkey became tender. So, and then I put it in the pot. So, I got the rolling boil going. I got a boil going already. We're going to add our greens. All right. So, we got our greens in there moving around. So, we just going to let them get in there, get in that juice. And shoot, we're going to let them do their thing. Got a little bit more to add, but I wanted to get them in there, show you guys, uh, putting them in the pot while they're water boiling. Don't be worried. Don't be worried if you got too many. They are going to cook down. <laughs> Greens are just like spinach. They're going to cook down. And before you know it, you got a cup <laughs> of greens because <laughs> they cook down. But anyway, uh, yeah, here we go. We got our greens going. So now we'll prep our chicken. Um, uh, we'll do our, yeah, we'll do our chicken next. So while these greens is cooking, we'll get our chicken going and we'll go from, get it marinating, go from there. Okay, guys. So now we got our greens going. We're going to get ahead, go ahead and get our, uh, marinade for our chicken strips together. So we're going to go with buttermilk. Magic poultry seasoning. Montreal chicken seasoning. Told y'all that's my go-to right there. That's the go-to. Hamburger Deluxe. We use that on just about everything. And a little bit of smoked paprika. Yeah. So we're going to get all of those incorporated into that bowl. And then we're going to get it mixed up. Get our chicken cut. And get it in the refrigerator for about 25 minutes. Okay, so somebody said in the comments, I don't be saying how much of stuff I be using. So we're going to walk through it together. If I miss something, get in the comments. Let me know. I'm new to this. We are, you know, we are, I'm just starting out, right? So look, uh, we're going to start with the buttermilk. Now, I'm going to probably, I'm going to use half of this, half of this container. So let's go with the half. Boom. Half of that. Okay. We're going to go with about, I don't know, some shakes of this poultry season. Yep. Yep. Well, it looks all right to me. <laughs> Montreal chicken. And so I actually, guys, don't really have a rhyme or reason to what, how I do it. I just do it. Um, so I just kind of like cover, um, you'll see in a second how I, sh how I cover it. I'll just show you. Um, I just kind of cover that, cover this area inside the bowl and go from there. It really ain't nothing to it. Nothing special. I promise you. So look, check it out. That's how I look when I get done. Now I'm going to mix that up. Then I'm going to throw the chicken in there. And we're going to get that in the refrigerator, and we're going to get it going. Okay, I just thought about another thing. Um, as I'm getting ready to start prepping this chicken, 
I also went ahead and prepped my flour. But I wanted you guys to see what I do with my flour as well. Because somebody said I'll be showing y'all it. So I'm going to show y'all what we got. So we just went in with some Montreal chicken seasoning. All right. We got our flour. Of course. We're going to use some of that. Boom. Seen that? I'm going to show y'all another one too. Guys, this one is one of my favorites that I use. This is chicken run. Oh my God, right? Get into it. Okay. Now, if y'all remember last week, I told y'all that I worked at a place, worked at the Embassy Suites Vanderbilt, and we would fry chicken on Sundays because we had to work. And so the trick was that we would put cornstarch in the chicken to make it crispy make it crispy. give it a little crunch so um cornstarch in the flour boom so we got all our flour mixed up and we're gonna get ready to get into prepping that chicken i wanted to show y'all my flour man so that way y'all can see what goes into the with everything that goes into making it a good old chicken, man. Goes into making it a good old chicken. So you got the buttermilk. If the, and that's if you want to do buttermilk, you don't have to do the buttermilk. I'm just trying to be fancy today because I feel you know the cheese one. <laughs> um, buttermilk. You can or can you don't have to. You can just go um, chicken straight to the flour, straight to the grease. So. It's up to you how you want to do it. Everybody's different. It's your kitchen. This is my kitchen. This is how I want to do it today. Most of the time, I I mean, I probably do it most of the time. But you know, every now and then, I just want something quick, so I won't I won't go with the won't go the buttermilk route. So like I said everything is so you. So we're gonna take a look at our greens here in a second. See how they looking, and then we're gonna cut our chicken. All right, got our greens rolling. They cook. I'm gonna turn them down just a little bit, so you can, uh, so we can, uh, just just a little simmer, slow cooking. You should know what I'm saying. But I want y'all to check them out. All right, boom. Now today's gadget we're gonna be using is the Master Built Turkey Fryer. Yes, indeed. Yeah, man. Um. Just a regular old turkey fryer. I ain't never fried a turkey, and it's a day of my life, but. Um, being a family of five, you know, sometimes you just gotta get it, get it all cooked. So that's how we, that's how we roll around here. Master built deep frying, man. Yeah. All right. So real quick, we're going to do, you know how we do our chicken over here, man. We fillet that chicken and then we cut off what we don't like, what we don't want to eat. And then we just go from there. Right. So same thing apply. Same thing apply with these guys. You just gonna give them a good old nice little fillet there, and then um, I would probably go probably three pieces. I'll probably get about three pieces out of one side of breast. So boom, boom, boom. There we go. And you can get fancy if you want to. You want to do some chicken nuggets? You can. <laughs> well, we gonna keep it strips over this way. We gonna keep it strips. Uh. So yeah, um, funny story. So I worked at um, 54th Street Grill and it was a steakhouse, right? And so we had to do this every for every order of chicken strips there was, this is what we had to do. So can you imagine standing cutting, battering chicken strips all night? Man, you be like, I don't want to see another piece of chicken. No, never no more. Yeah, it's don't I don't want to see no more chicken. So, yeah, that's how I learned this little trick of the trade. You know, you got your dry hand and your wet hand and all of that. So yeah, that's where I learned that from. Love Fifty Fourth Street now. Fifty Fourth Street Grill here in Texas don't it don't hit like you do back home in St. Louis, Missouri, which is originally where I'm from. They don't have the happy hour tacos. Now, let me tell y'all something. These tacos, it's like, 
Oh my god, it's it's okay. So you can get chicken or you can get beef. Either one is a win. Either one of them is a win. I'm telling you, either one of them is a win. So chicken or beef. These tacos are so fire. <laughs> and they like a it might have been like three of them for like five hours during happy hour or something like that. And then you can keep them going, like keep mixing and matching them. Oh my god, you talking about good? <sighs> so of course with everything guys I give everything a good watch you never know where nothing being who touched it um, and you can never go wrong with washing your chicken you never go wrong with washing your chicken guys so I'm gonna always wash my stuff and give it a good rinse and so I don't know if you can see my shirt but I got a this dope cooker show shirt <laughs> If not, I'm gonna show y'all the end. Um, so well, we'll get this into our buttermilk. I'm just gonna put them right on in there. Right on. That's what our buttermilk looks like. Ready to be ready to put some chicken in it. And so we'll just transfer this freshly washed cut chicken into the bowl. Somebody say, well, pat it dry. It's going to liquid anyway. It's cool. Don't worry about it. It's all fine. Put it all in there. Boom. We got it. Now, normally I would season this chicken, but since it's going in the buttermilk, I'm going to not season it. I'm just not going to do it. So here we go. We got our chicken. At this point in the game, you can add some hot sauce. Give your, kick, give your chicken a kick. Or you can add some um, Cajun seasoning as well to get you a kick. It's up to you. Um, your kitchen, your show. I'm going to just keep it simple for these little dudes. Because um, I don't want to do too much. So we're going to put this in the, in the uh, refrigerator. We're going to let it sit for about 30. We'll be back. Okay. So now we're going to get here to make this, go ahead and make this cheese sauce for this smoked cheese, smoked mac and cheese. So the smokehouse cheddar, that's going to give you your smoky flavor with a little gouda, pepper jack cheese. I'm going to give you a, sm a little bit of a bite. We're going to bring it all together with some heavy cream and milk. And we're going to also add some um, smoked paprika in it as well. That's going to give it a little bit of a red color and uh that's going to give it a little bit um, more of a smokier taste. All right, let's get. All right. Now, remember, you want to go slow and low with these cheese sauces. You don't want your, your milk to burn. You don't want your cheese. To, you don't want your sauce to scorch. So you want to go slow and low with that. So we got our milk in first. We're going to go. Um, I smoke paprika. Four or five shakes of that, that'll be good. Then I'll hit it with some uh, heavy whipping cream. Let that get heated up. So I'm going to use probably, I'm going to use half of this. I only use a little, like a quarter of the milk. So I'm going to use half of this. Uh, I'm going to save it just in case it gets too thick. Um, I still want it to be creamy. I don't want it to be too, too thick. So we don't want to. We don't want like a fondue. We want a cheese sauce. So we'll get those heated up and going. Um, as you can see, them greens still going over there looking pretty good. Uh, we got our, our fryer heating up. And then uh, we'll go from there, guys. We getting it on together. We getting it on together. I threw an audible on the play. Just so y'all know. I went on pulled me some catfish out of the freezer. <laughs> Let me old surf and turf dinner. You know what I mean? Let's surf and turf dinner. Yeah. So yeah, we get we let that cheese. Oh, I mean, we'll let the milk, uh, heavy cream mixture go ahead and heat up, come to a, a, a smoky boil, and then we'll add our cheeses in. Right, we'll go from there. Okay, we got a little smoke coming off our coming off our milk here so we're gonna go ahead and start adding these cheeses so i'm gonna go with the shredded stuff first because this is easier why not go ahead and knock that out 
Boom. So we're going to go in here with our pepper jack first. And it's good to give it, you know, a little bit of a break in between. Let it start to melt those cheeses down. We'll start there. Give it a good little break. I mean, a good little whisk there. And you'll be able to feel the weight of the cheese in the pan. Hitting that whisk. Get you a, a light wire whisk like so. And you can feel the, the weight of if that cheese is melted or not or if it's just in there. So we just want to make sure that we keep it, keep it going. Keep it stirring. All right. So each... So we got a cup and a half because each one of these bags is two cups. So we got a cup and a half of the pepper jack shredded cheese. All right. Cup and a half, cup and a half, cup and a half. So boom, we starting to get a some thickness there with that cheese. I don't know about y'all, but I love making sauces and stuff like this. So I love making cheese sauces, especially when you can mix the cheeses up and get different flavors out of them. So dope, so dope. Uh, yeah. So next we'll go in with this smokehouse cheddar. Right, so we got our cheese mixture going. Now we put a cup and a half of that pepper jack cheese in there, right? Okay, okay. So now we want to go in with our smoked cheddar cheese slices. We're going there with the smoked cheddar. Oh, it smells so good. So boom. However you want to, you know, have me pieces of smoked cheddar cheese you want to put in there. This is your show. This is what you want to, this is your thing. So you put as many of them in there as you like. Whew. Okay, we almost had us a little mess. You see that? We almost had us a little mess. So we're going to keep on stirring. Keep on stirring. I'm going to go ahead and turn our greens down to a low simmer because they about done. The greens about done. So remember, it's good to take your time. It's good to slow and low, especially with this cheese sauce so that way you don't uh, mess up nothing. You don't scorch your cheese sauce. You don't burn the bottom of your pot. As long as you hear that moving around down there, that sh -sh 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 -sh, hear that? That's how you know you ain't got nothing stuck to the bottom of your pot, man. It's always good to rotate it around. Rotate your pot back and forth so that way I got a little pot. I don't want to. So, character flaw. <laughs> toxic trait of mine I always make too much of something so for me to counteract that or um, not do it I have to make things in smaller pots because if not I have enough stuff for an army why uh, here's the thing I started off cooking in at Harris Casino in the buffet and it you you couldn't make too much. You know what I mean? There was no way that you could make too much of something because it was going to run out between the hours of operation. Uh, one thing about it, we would get our, you know, our basically our grocery list of what we needed for the night and shoot. We would make pans. I would have 10 pans or something, you know? So I just come from batch cooking, cooking in uh, large amounts. So, Character, character flaw of mine, I always be cooking too much. So I try to counteract that by cooking things in a smaller pot. So we got our cheese sauce. That's pretty much it on the cheese sauce, guys. I didn't want to do too much. Um, 
but I wanted to get that. I wanted to guys show you guys that smoky flavor. That's sm where I got my smoky flavor from. So the smokehouse cheddar, um, a little bit of the Gouda cheese, and then some smoked paprika. Can't go wrong with that. That's going to bring out a little bit more of that cheesy flavor as well. Um, and that's it on that. So we'll get some macaroni going, some old macaroni noodles going. Um, and then we'll fry our chicken too. So cheese sauce is ready to go. I'm not going to bake it. I'm just on, this is going to be a pour over. Um, so I'll just sit this off to the side and we, and that's a done deal. And then, uh, we'll make our, we'll go ahead and fry some chicken. What you think? I think we're going ahead and fry some chicken. Get to it. All right, we got our cheese sauce done. Our greens are done. Let's go ahead and fry some chicken, guys. Yep. So we let our uh, we let our chicken sit in the buttermilk mixture thirty minutes. So we're gonna just pull them out. We'll go right into that batter. We'll go right into that flour mixture we made up earlier. It's gonna be good. I know that for sure. Why? Because my mama taught me how to fry chicken. <laughs> and then Miss Pam taught me how to fry chicken at the MG Suites. I already knew how to fry chicken, but Miss Pam put another whole little spin on it. So shout out to her. She's still alive. You ever think about people that you cross in your in your path when you're during your lifetime and you want to know like if they still alive or if they still, you know doing good, things like that. It's only one person that I worked with back in Tennessee. Well, I can't say one person. One person that I had a relationship with back in Tennessee that I was thinking about, and that's Miss Pam. She was a cool old lady. Um, a lot of times I uh, make friends with older ladies, um, and they be cool people too. They be killed, like, you're supposed to be like, you know, somebody grandmama, they be grandmamas, you know, they be, you know, mamas that be done been through some or know some, and they just always have them life lessons for you, you know, you ever had some depth with somebody like that? I always meet them kind of people in the workforce, in my working with people, so, so we got us some tenders in here, guys, we got them rolling around in our flour, we're gonna go ahead and get them over into the fryer. Now, one thing about this fryer, if you have one, you know that it gets hot. And another thing is that it takes a long time to get hot. But when it gets hot, it's ready. But until then, you got to wait. You are playing the waiting game. I'm talking about waiting your turn because it don't get in no hurry. It don't get in no hurry about nothing. Um, So we're going to fry our chicken fingers on... About 350. That does it. That does well. Don't cook too fast. Gives it an even cook all the way through. Um, don't burn your flour on the outside so it's not too dark. Um, plus, this is some fresh oil, so it's going to be real pretty when it come out. Uh, and so, another thing you can do, uh, when your chicken come out the fryer, you can hit it again with some more seasoning. You know, as long as it ain't too salty, you can hit it with something else. Uh, so, we may do that. Just depending on how we feeling. But as of right now, we're getting them drop, getting them dropped in. See if we can get it all in one batch. Then we're going to drop no more. That would be cool, huh? This uh, particular fryer holds a lot. I mean, like, it's, it's life. It's, the purpose is for, it's the turkey fryer. Um, but it holds quite a bit. Like, I can do probably about. 10 pieces of fish in here, something like that. So it holds a lot and uh, it'll get the job done pretty quick. So that's what I like about it. We, uh, like I say, as a family of five, we have, we might just drop them in there, drop a bag of chicken nuggets, drop a bag of chicken tenders, drop some catfish. So, you know, you get it done out the way. So um, I like it, you know, get the job done, like I said. And, uh, 
Can't never have too many kitchen gadgets. I'm just saying. Now, I know I probably shouldn't have so many, but who, hey, you know, who count? Who keeping track? And if you keep keeping track, stop it. Knock it off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Got our chicken frying. Oh, we got to get our noodles on too, guys. So, let me get some, um, let's get some macaroni going. So, we can put our, mix our sauce, put our sauce in it. Oh, yeah. Dinner finna be straight. I can't wait, actually. I don't know about you. If you following along, I appreciate it. Tune in and tell a friend, tag a friend. This dope cooking show is on. And we are making some collard greens. We got a smoked mac and cheese we finna have. With some fried chicken strips we made from scratch. <laughs> scratch batter. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be good, guys. So... We are all set, ready to go. We're gonna come back with some uh, when our noodles get to boiling, and I'll show you how pretty this chicken come out too. That's gonna be awesome, y'all. Look at that, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Look at that chicken, how pretty that is, man. Don't get no better than that right there. So we got. Our chicken is done, our greens are done, our cheese sauce is done for our mac and cheese. All we waiting on is for our water to heat up so we can go ahead and make our smoked mac and cheese. Now, see, this is why I be doing too much, right? Because I want to do some cheddar biscuits or something like that to go with it. But See, ah, I, I be doing too much. You be doing too much? It's okay, though, because, I mean, when you get in the kitchen, sometimes you get creative, and that's okay. You just have to be, you know, you just have to be thinking about your time, things like that. Also, whew, that's a lot of food to eat at one time. But I think I am going to throw me a piece of fish over in that grease since it's hot. Can't go wrong with that. But don't forget, guys, show that water some love when you go ahead and make your, your uh, if, you, if you're doing macaroni from scratch. Uh, put a little salt, a little oil in that water. Season your water. So your macaroni and it'll be, you know. A little oil in there so they don't stick. Salt in there for a little season. Make that water boil fast. And did you know that water boils fast if you put salt in it? <laughs> old school told me that a long time ago. I learned that from an old, uh, I forget what the guy's name was. That was at the very, very beginning of my career. Boiling some, getting ready to make some macaroni and cheese for the buffet. <clears throat> He said, hey, you need to put some salt in that water. And they gonna never boil you standing there watching it. Which is true. A watch pot will never boil. Just thought, I, just thought I'd share that little bit of tidbit of information for you. Now, I'm just going to go and say it going on and say it. The Holy Box got the best catfish in the city. I'm just saying. I stand on that. What is the Holy Box? <laughs> that is my food truck. Um, that I started ooh, three years ago now. Yeah, it's been about three years. And uh, yeah, man, best catfish in the city. I stand on that. Uh, I haven't been uh grinding this thing on out, and it's a, it's a fun ride. So if you're in the DFW area, um, follow the Holy Box. That is my food truck. Catch me in the wind. Catch me if you can. <laughs> Catch me while I got some fish on the stand. Uh, Cause it goes quick. It's not a game out here. Uh, but yeah, I had this grease hot. I had to go ahead and put me a few pieces of this old fish down and then old surf and turf type of evening. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know what y'all got going on, but my Sunday dinner shaping up pretty good. Okay, so while I'm standing over here frying fish, I just wanna go ahead and say that I fry my fish and my chicken in the same oil. I just fry my chicken first. No discrimination. I just fry my I just fry my chicken first. We you were with me fried all the chicken. We got that done already. Um so yeah. We are wrapping this thing on up. We got our noodles going. They are about done. So we put our mac and cheese together. Ooh, and one you wait till you wait till you see this plate. This is a pure fat boy plate. <laughs> Back to our chicken strips. As you can see, 
they give you like a home style chicken um, type result. Um, not the huge biggest fan, but in this case, um, my kids like the crunch, so it works. It works out. Um, but for me, I'm kind of a you know, I don't need all that bread. But that that crunch, that look, is what that cornstarch will give you. Um, you cooking up your uh, your chicken. So yeah, man. Yeah, I got my got my fish cooking. <laughs> it's gonna go down. This play finna be awesome. I'm finna catch the end of this football, this football uh, uh, championship showdown. What team you root for? My team is in. <laughs> the Chiefs. My team is in there. I don't know about who you was rooting for. I know the Cowboys didn't make it. We'll try again next year. We'll try again next year, guys. It's okay. You know, win some, you lose some. The Cowboys on a good old roll. And then they got stumped. They got stumped, stumped, stumped. That's all right, man. That is okay. It's okay. All uh, right. So, boom. Back over here. Checking it out. We got our mac and cheese. I'm going to go ahead and pour this on over that. See? That cream. Ooh, shut up. Did you see that? That poor? Shut up. Stop playing. All right. So this is what my kids going to like right here. That's what they like. Mac and cheese right there. Ooh, shut up. Stop playing with them. No flex zone. No, or none of that. But I'm playing with him. And it's cool, guys. Go ahead. You can go ahead and season your mac and cheese. It's not against the law. Because it's your what? Your kitchen. You do what you want to do. Season how you want to. So, of course, I hit it with a little season. I'm going to season everything all on the whole way. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Boom. We ready. We ready. Freddy. It's going to be a good meal right here, y'all. Catfish looking right nice. So we got our collard greens. We got our mac and cheese done. Oh, we got our chicken. Hello, chicken. We got our chicken on. <laughs> and we're going to have our fish in a minute. Yeah, that's how we do it. This don't cook a show. Another good meal. You can do it however you want it. That's how we do it on this way over here. So, yeah, man, we're going to plate us a plate. We're going to get it in. Oh man, what I tell you? What I tell you? Look at that plate. Yeah, man. Good eating right there. This dope cooking show, we gotta go. We gotta grub. <laughs> 